Welcome to my new VOR tutorial. Below us is a VOR. I'm going to show you how to track to and from it on an airway with Navigraph. And I'll do my best to leave out any fancy terminology and make this as simple as possible. This is Seal Beach VOR. We're going to fly to it. Then we're going to fly from it. We're going to fly this airway to this VOR, which is Santa Catalina. And from there, we're going to fly this airway. And then somewhere on that airway, we'll fly back to Seal Beach VOR and practice flying to again. To fly a VOR, the first thing we need to do is tune the VOR frequency. Second, turn the course knob. Then center the needle with a two indication if flying to a VOR. Turn towards the course under the head of the needle. Then turn left or right as needed to center the needle. This seems like a lot, but after you do it, it gets very simple. Here's Seal Beach VOR, and you can see us to the northeast flying towards Seal Beach VOR. When flying a VOR, make sure the active nav source is on VOR and not GPS. You can see the frequency 115.7 is tuned in nav 1. Now that step 1 is complete, the next step is to spin the course knob until the needle centers with a 2 indication. And what that will look like, the 2 indication and the head of the needle will be pointing in the same direction, like this. This is the 2 from indicator, this is a 2 indication, and this is the head of the needle. And the head of that needle is at 212 degrees. We need to turn to 212 degrees. And the last step, if the needle's to the right, we need to turn right. If the needle's to the left, turn left. And while we approach Seal Beach VOR, I want to say thank you to the guys at Navigraph. They do sponsor me. They do give me a, their subscription for free. Having Navigraph makes videos like this much easier. The aircraft position is overlaid onto the chart and that makes it very easy to show situational awareness and to be able to show you what's actually going on versus just looking at an instrument. In on Navigraph, I am able to pull up VOR frequencies. All I have to do is tap the VOR on the map and it will pull up a box showing the VOR information along with the frequency. I will pull up that information here in a little bit when we get closer to Santa Catalina VOR. Navigraph can be used on the PC, but I use it on an iPad. That allows me to do screen recordings and overlay it on the screen like you see right now. You'll also notice we have DME pulled up. Right now it says 1.5, but more importantly, watch the to from flag. It went away, and when it comes back, that to indication will flip to a from indication. Now that we're past the VOR, we're gonna fly Victor 21 out to Santa Catalina VOR. We can see our course is 202, that's a radial. Radials are emitted from a VOR. There are 360 radials emitting from a VOR. The ones we see on the map here are just published radials. They are airways, highways in the sky. So for instance, the one we're on is called Victor 21, and it is 31 miles long, and the minimum en route altitude for that airway is 4,000 feet. So to fly this airway, we already have the VOR frequency tuned. And the radial on the map tells us it's 202. We need to spend 202 in the course. We already have that. And the next thing we have to do is center the needle. Turn left or turn right to center the needle. We've already done that. So when the needle's centered, think of that needle as the airway. That's the middle of the airway. Or the course we're flying to or from off of a VOR. Here I'm going to turn to the right and go off course on purpose and show you what the indication looks like based on our aircraft's position on the map. Here you can see where the airway is. In our aircraft position, we are to the right of our course or to the right of the center of the airway. We need to turn left to get back on that airway and you can see it on the map and you can see the needle on the HSI is to the left telling us we need to turn to the left to get back on the center of the airway. I'm going to fast forward this part so you can see it happen a little bit faster. As we approach the midpoint of the airway we need to switch from Seal Beach VOR 
over to Santa Catalina VOR. And on the Navigraph page on the iPad, all I did was tap on the VOR and it brought up this information box for Santa Catalina VOR. And you can see the identifier and the frequency right here. And in the TBM 930 on Flight Sim 2020, when those are entered, they'll match up over here. You can also see the Morse code identifier of the VOR. Normally in real life, you check that when you tune a VOR, you make, that's how you verify that is the correct VOR. I did not do it on here because when I do the tutorials, I do turn the volume down and you're not gonna hear it anyway. And when I say turn the volume down, I mean I turn down the volume of the flight simulator on the editing software so you can hear me and not be drowned out by the airplane engine sound. So you can see 111.4 is tuned and Sierra X-Ray Charlie is the identifier. And since we've made that switch, Santa Catalina VOR is in front of us. And you'll notice we have a 2 indication on the 2 from flag on the HSI. When you tune to the next VOR on an airway, you'll normally have to turn the course knob a little bit. We can see 022 on the airway over here. That 022 is a radial, that's a from indication, but we're flying 2. We don't want to tune 022. And there are two ways we can use that number to help us out. One way is to put the tail of the course needle on 022. The other way is to add or subtract 180 from that number without going over 360 degrees. And then take that number and put it up here in the course like you would normally. What we're going to do now is fly to Santa Catalina VOR. We're going to cross the station, fly out east on this radial. Once we cross the VOR, we're going to fly the next radial or the number we're going to enter into the course knob to fly the airway. And once again, to know we are passing the VOR, the two flag flips to a from flag, the course needle goes away, and then comes back. And that does happen in real life. There is a cone or a cone of silence where the VOR signal does not transmit when you're directly above it, and that is a normal indication. And we can now see our from flag. We're past the VOR. We're now going to fly a Victor 208. The radial on that is 084, so we need to spin our course knob to 084. So in this situation, we know we're going to fly the 084 course. So all we're going to do is turn left in this situation to 084. And then look which way the needle is, left or right. In this case, when we're on the 084 heading, the needle is going to be to our left. So we would continue a left turn and intercept no more than a 45 degree angle. But in this situation, I am using the autopilot. You can just press the nav button and the autopilot will intercept automatically for you. And as I say, don't correct more than a 45 degree angle. That's just the general rule of thumb. When I have the autopilot engaged, it will correct at an angle greater than 45 degrees. So we've flown from a VOR twice, so you can see how that works and what the indications look like. We've flown to a VOR once. Now I'm gonna fast forward this part after it intercepts, and then we're gonna fly back to Seal Beach VOR and go through the initial steps one more time. And I goofed up. We did fly to a VOR twice. We just did it on an airway. We're gonna do it this time to Seal Beach without an airway. We're just gonna tune it like we're flying to any VOR, we see it and we just want to go direct to it. So that's what we're going to do. So say you took off from an airport, you want to fly to a particular VOR. First step you're going to take is you're going to find and tune the VOR frequency into your NAV1. So in this case, Seal Beach SLI is 115.7, that's tuned. The next step is you're going to turn the course knob until you get a two indication and the needle centers. So as we turn the knob, you can see the two from flag. The two flag is pointing the same direction as the head of the needle. And right there, the needle centers. 
So it's pointing about 355, actually 354. We're going to turn left to 354 degrees. And once we get to that 354 degree heading, look back at the needle. Is it to the left or to the right? If it's to the left, you need to turn left and intercept till the needle centers, then turn back to that 354 degree heading. And the nice thing about a VOR, it will correct for wind for you. You just have to keep the needle centered. If the needle's centered, you're on that particular course. So as we begin to roll out near the course or the heading, we can see the needles to our left. So we need to turn to the left to intercept that course. So uh, in this example, we might only turn to maybe 320 or 340 degrees. We don't need to make a big correction because we do have course guidance, meaning we can see where the needle's at. It's not pegged on the edge of the indication. Another trick to figure out the angle you need to correct, point the nose of the airplane at the top of the needle. And I mean the nose of the airplane here on the HSI and the top of the CDI or course deviation needle that we're flying towards. As we begin to center the needle and get established on the course that we centered, we know that we're flying to the VOR on the 354 degree course. So we're flying to the VOR, but radials are from VORs. If this needle was centered, and it will be here in a second, if ATC were to ask us, what radial are you on? Could we tell them? And without turning the course knob, we absolutely could tell them what radial we're on. So with this needle centered, all we need to do to figure out the radial is to look at the tail of the HSI needle. And it's right there, 175. We're on the 175 degree radial from Seal Beach VOR. And that's what the 175 degree radial would look like right there. And that 175 isn't quite straight up and down. You're thinking 180 straight down, but that's uh, true north and versus true south. This is magnetic. It's slightly different. On the VOR around it is a compass rose. You, the 180 mark is right here. And that's all I have. If somebody's trying this for the first time, I recommend flying to and from a VOR in your local area. Just find an area that you are familiar with. It makes it a little bit easier for reference. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You can always ask in the comments, or you can look at my About page. My email address is on there, and you can ask, and I will answer you. Thank you.